Hello everybody, uh, welcome uh, to the second lecture of statistics in SPSS. Uh, I have to uh, thank you that you are here and you didn't uh, change your mind. And uh, today uh, we should enter into SPSS environment. So this is, will be the first time you will see SPSS environment, you will understand, I hope so, what is data matrix, uh, what are uh, cases, uh, variables, etc. in SPSS environment. First of all, uh, some details about the course. So, uh, your uh, homework evaluation can be found in student information system. I have uploaded the file which is called homework 2015 and there are names and uh, evaluation and sometimes comments if something is missing. So all uh, new uh, assignments or homework will be uh, in SIS usually before the lecture sometimes uh, uh, later, but still you can get the idea about number of points you get uh, and if it is enough uh, for uh, your exam. So that's the first information. The second information, due to some technical problems uh, at our uh, web pages, uh, I have sent you uh, just uh, now email uh, with the link uh, to study materials we will use uh, at the end of uh, this lecture. So in your emails you should have information uh, uh, at which uh, web page you can download material we will use at the end. But at the beginning, uh, we don't need uh, any special materials. Uh, yeah? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's only one possibility. As, uh, uh, the second possibility is to buy the software itself, but it costs thousands of euros. So, excuse me, it's commercial software and uh, I do not have any special edition for students. Yeah, as we do not have, unfortunately, uh, some special license uh, with IBM uh, currently. We are preparing some new contract, but still it's not functioning. But this is, I hope, still nice option how to use the software at home. Excuse me for this inconvenience. Okay, so let's uh, go to introduction to SPSS. So, uh, the first what you should know is uh, that this product full name is IBM SPSS Statistics, but I will call it uh, for the whole course only SPSS. And I should explain that SPSS originally stand it for social, uh, statistical package for social sciences. So you can understand that it was, at the beginning, developed as the special package for social sciences. Now the meaning is maybe slightly different, uh, and also uh, many other branches that only social sciences uses this software, but still we can use it as it was originated in social sciences. So, current version, uh, but still, excuse me, not implemented at these computers. I hope it will be better uh, in uh, next two weeks. But current version is 23. So if you download your trial version at home, you will have the newest version 23. But it doesn't matter whether you will have 23, 21, 20, or even maybe 16, as in this introduction, we will use the procedures which are all the same in all these versions. So it's not the problem. Uh, what I would like to say that the basic logic of SPSS, and it's very, very similar to another software, is following. You have something what is usually called base module. So this is usually basic statistical procedures which you have to usually buy if it is commercial or download if it is free of charge. And then you can have some add installations, some edit modules. And for SPSS, you can see there are 14 more advanced modules, so it's quite a big package, uh, especially in comparison with other softwares. But of course, if you will buy the SPSS, you will have to pay for base and for every module, so it can be quite a uh, uh, very expensive software. I think that uh, the current price for the all these 14 edit modules and base is approximately 10,000 euros. So I do not expect you will tell me, okay, that's fantastic, and I will buy it uh, today afternoon. <laughs> 
So, uh, I would say that uh, it's very widespread software, especially in social sciences, and mainly in something what we call applied research, as we do some academic stuff, something what is called sometimes sociological research, political science research, etc. But people who do research for some commercial companies, such as for Tesco or for BBC, or uh, and other stuff, they do usually public opinion research or market research, and these researchers, I would say maybe in 90 or maybe more percentages, use mainly SPSS. So it's very, very widespread software, especially in applied research. And I would say that uh, one of big advantage, but maybe your opinion will be slightly different, is advanced graphics, especially Current uh, version of SPSS 23, I think the first one was uh, SPSS 16, is wholly programmed in Java. So it's very, very nice, uh, and uh, you will see that the pictures are very smart and uh, are very nice to see. And uh, also, uh, quite old uh, uh, property in SPSS output is that all tables, all charts, or all outputs together can be taken as one object, second object, etc., etc., and copied into another software very easily. Uh, maybe you know the shortage Control plus C, Control plus V, or you use uh, mouses, or maybe uh, you touch your screen, but it's very, very easy to take the object as one unit. So not to take one figure, second figure, etc., etc., but you will take it as a law. So that's very, very nice property and you will see it uh, today. And first of all, we need to understand the logic of uh, SPSS windows or different data files. As usually, individual data file that can be stored at your computer is different window in SPSS environment. So first of all, what you will need for this course is to use some data files. So if you will see extension SAV, it would be the file which is readable as SPSS data file. I will give you some more information about the meaning data file itself, but currently let's take it as it is. Extension SAV means I have data file. Of course, that some friend of you can prepare a joke and change some extension into SAV, <laughs> but please, usually, uh, you will download data with SAV extension and it will work on SPSS environment. Then the next file you will use quite often, but I will try to say well, maybe this is not the best practice, is the file which will include all your output. It means all your tables, all your charts you will analyze, and extension is usually SPV for these files. And we will use these files, it means data file and output file for this course. If you try to be a little bit advanced in SPSS, you will use also some special files. I do remember that in your textbook and uh, the field textbook, uh, there is some note that uh, syntax file, I will tell you more uh, in a few minutes, uh, syntax file use only some silly statisticians. <laughs> so believe me, it's slightly complicated, but you can write your own programs, how to analyze data, and these programs are called syntaxes. And if you save this file with all your procedures you would like to run in SPSS, so you will get the file which is called by extension SPS. And also, there is some advanced programming included in SPSS environment. It means creating uh, macros, and uh, these files with macros uh, use extension SPM. So if you will see these files, you can be sure they fit into SPSS environment, but we will not learn here how to use these files. But if you like to know more, there is a little uh, bit, of course, in textbook and more and more materials uh, on the websites uh, throughout the world, so you can read more. Okay, so let's start with data file 
as uh, it will be the base for our analysis. If you do not have data, you are not allowed to do any statistics, any data analysis. So you need some data. Today, we will create our own data, but next time and all other lectures, we will use some prepared data by our professional researchers. So today, let's start with a description of data file. So extension SAV, it's internal format for SPSS, so no other software will read this data. Maybe there are some exceptions, some special other statistical packages will be able to read SAV data, but it's quite rare. If you, for example, use Microsoft Excel, you are not able to read SAV data. So, what is included in data file, and we will learn how to prepare this data today. So, variables and uh, individual values of variables we usually call data. So, in data file, it's quite easy to guess, data are included. So, usually, these are figures, numbers. Sometimes we can use also uh, uh, text or string as data, uh, but usually this will be quite big amount of figures. So these are data. Then SPSS also can save for you description of your data. Usually every variable has its own name. So for example, if your variable is measuring uh, the age, so you would like to SPSS to remember that this variable should be in all tables and all charts uh, called H. And if you say to SPSS this is H, it will use it for every procedure as H. So that's variable name, we will discuss more about it. Then SPSS also can save information about uh, variable uh, value labels, so it means it will save the information that, for example, code 1 means I am very satisfied, code 2 is I am slightly satisfied, 5 totally uh, dissatisfied, etc., etc. It can also save information about values you would like to omit from your analysis. We will discuss more later, so it is also possible to store missing values. Quite, I hope so, nice information is that if you save data in this SAV format in SPSS, for example, version 23, and you will open it in SPSS, for example, 20, it will be the same file and you can work with it. So it is transferable not only to newer version, but also to older version, usually. There can be some small mistakes, but there are no big troubles. Output file, it's totally different story. Extension SPV, it usually includes some tables, some charts, and all other outputs that can be created, for example, uh, also some uh, commands, it means syntax is included here, and everything what is proceeded in SPSS is uh, present in output file. Of course, you can erase part of it, you can erase all the output and start it once again, but big problem for your real practice is that this output file, this extension SPV, if you, for example, save in version 23, it cannot be read in version 22, 21, and opposite is also true. So only the same version you are using for saving can open this output file. So it's quite unpleasant, and be careful about this problem. But there is one recommendation, and of course we will use practical steps how to do it. Uh, you can export individual table, all the output into, for example, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Word, and use it and also edit it in this another environment. So I would propose, if you would like to save your results and, for example, work at home also with your output, which will be from different version than is your current version, let's save it as uh, Microsoft Word or Excel, and you can use it nearly everywhere. So that's easy recommendation. So now I hope it's quite clear that we will use some data and you have also option to save your output. That's the base for another procedures. And uh, the first step we will do is introduction to SPSS menu. So I hope that all of you 
have the possibility to see SPSS environment. This is SPSS environment. And first of all, we will go through the menu. So you can see some quite classical options such as file and edit, and then maybe something which is not traditional, such as analyze, crafts, uh, etc. So let's go very quickly through this menu and discuss about the contents. So the first option usually present in all software is file. So it's not very uh, surprising. We can find it also in SPSS. But the logic is slightly, slightly different. As you can see, there is new file, open file, or also saving file. But for new file and open file, you have four options. As we discussed previously, there is possibility to prepare new data. It means SAV. We can use also some programming, syntax, SPS extension, output, SPV, and script, it's macro, as we discussed previously. So we have four different types, and for us only data and output we will use. Of course, if you have some saved materials for your uh, data analysis, you can open data which you previously prepared or somebody else prepared for you. So you can open data, and not only in SPSS format you will see, but for example, if you have data in Microsoft Excel format or another statistical package format, you can open it as well. We will see how it works next time. Then you can open syntax, output, uh, and script as well. It is also possible to open database, so if you are familiar with database and SQL programming, you can also use SPSS environment. We will not do this step in this lecture, so we will skip it. Then there are some special options uh, we will skip. And uh, if you prepare your own data, of course, you can save this data. So there are options save and save as, as classical options, but still we do not have any data, so it's not possible to save it. And then quite nice option is uh, to open very quickly recently used data and recently used files. I think this is the same option as you are familiar with uh, from Microsoft Office. Uh, and here I think there is 10 options. Last 10 files you can open directly very quickly. So that's file uh, option, I think, very easy to guess uh, about the purpose so we can skip to the next part, yeah? No problem. If there are any questions, raise your hand or uh, shout and say, no, 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 it's very, very difficult to understand. Okay, the next option is edit. Once again, it's quite classical one, uh, so you can undo, redo, uh, you can copy, paste, etc., etc. very easy. Only two new options in a SPSS environment is insert variable and insert case. It means to add one more row or add one more column, we will see later, but we will not use it at all. So, uh, I think we can skip view as uh, it is only about graphics, uh, so we can skip it. And uh, three or maybe four, the most important options in SPSS environment are called data, transform, analyze, and graphs. So let's go slightly into detail and we will learn individual <coughs> tasks later. So data, we know what the expression data means. And here are some options for Definition of data properties. We will learn how to define data properties uh, today in a few minutes. And then there are some special options, such as you can sort your data according uh, to some column. You can uh, transpose your data. It means exchange rows and columns. You can split your data file into two, three, four files and analyze them separately. You can select only part of the data and uh, we'll discuss later also about weighting. So here are some basic procedures for data handling. Definition of data properties at the beginning and then some changes in your data. Very similar procedures can be found in transform menu. So if you 
have prepared some data or you downloaded some data and open SPSS, you can change individual variables by some procedures which are in general called transforming. So these transformations can be made by computation of some new variable, we will discuss later, by counting some occurrences of individual values in some variables, by recording, and many, many other procedures uh, are present in SPSS environment. We will learn once again some of the most important from these procedures. And then the biggest menu you can find in SPSS environment is called Analyze. All statistical procedures which are present in SPSS are included in this Analyze. If you, for example, have only base module, this is the necessary part of SPSS, this menu will be approximately one half of this long menu only, as not all procedures are included in base. And uh, now you can see quite many, many sub-menu included in this menu. If you go through these uh, individual uh, menus, so you can see many, many more options. But uh, I would like to say that we will not, of course, go through all these procedures. So we will only very briefly go through descriptive statistics, then we will learn something about comparing means, and then correlate and regression, and that's all. So other parts will be discussed in other courses, or uh, you can find uh, in books uh, description of these other parts, but will not be covered by this course. So it's only approximately, I would say, maybe one-tenth of all procedures included in SPSS included in this course. So believe me, it's not possible to do more. So that's analyze all statistical stuff. Next part, also quite uh, nice, and I hope uh, you will use these charts uh, for your own uh, computations. Uh, uh, it's included in uh, menu graphs, and by these graphs you can create your charts. Uh, there is a special tool which is called Char Builder. And uh, there are also individual charts uh, which are present in legacy dialogues. Uh, this is older version of this menu, so you can use old fashion style or new fashion style according uh, uh, to uh, your uh, personality. Uh, then we can step utilities, add-ons, uh, window. This is classical uh, windows option that you can uh, change individual windows, but maybe you know some shortage for it, so it's not necessary, or you can use mouse. And the last part of the menu itself I would like to discuss in more detail is help. Uh, of course, uh, that maybe teacher can help you better than help itself, but if you do not have teacher, if you do not have YouTube, if you do not have uh, internet, sometimes it can happen, uh, so you will have to use this help. There are many, many parts which are uh, very nice uh, in SPSS help, and I would say that in comparison with classical software in which there is only some short recommendation, in SPSS help you can find quite a lot, and you can also learn itself quite a lot from this help. As if you download SPSS to your own computer, you do not only install SPSS environment, but you will install also all files that uh, are included in these help uh, uh, procedures. And you can follow these computations at your home computer. Let's see a uh, very nice part, or I hope it's quite nice part, which is called uh, the, the, the case studies. So if you click on it, uh, web browser should be opened. And, uh, you can uh, find some description of individual procedures. So let's click on continue, and you can decide what you would like to know more. For example, you are new to SPSS environment and you would try to read data. So we will click on the left side to reading data. And uh, you can learn something about reading data. And if you uh, click uh, in detail structure of reading data, so you can learn something more about basic structure. So here you can see some part of the data. So you can see screenshot of the real data and description 
how to read data in a SPSS environment, how to read data from Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, how to read data from database, etc., etc. And you can go through these uh, tutorials and plan how to do individual procedures. So it's very, very nice and pleasant uh, possibility how to learn, for example, at home by a SPSS environment. Many, many cases are included, not only in this tutorial, but also in these uh, case studies. You can find individual statistical procedures, once again described by individual cases. So if you click on individual parts, so you can use what you would like to do, for example, in statistics space, you would like to do exploratory data analysis, and you would like to describe some of your data. So you can learn how to run analysis, then how to change your table, for example, how to use some uh, uh, charts, and how to summarize your results. So that's quite a nice tool, and now you can say, okay, so it's, it's not necessary to go uh, to the lectures. I can learn everything at home, that's very easy. Everything is described uh, here in help, uh, in, statistic, uh, in tutorial and case studies part of the help. So that's help, and I would say that uh, help in SPSS helps in comparison with many other help uh, in other softwares. So that's a very quick introduction uh, to SPSS menu, uh, so you have some basic description on slides, and uh, of course I would like uh, to ask you if there are any questions so far. No questions? So we can go further. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, one, thing, uh, one more information uh, is uh, that if you are a fan of uh, mathematics and statistics, you can also find in help algorithms, it means individual formulas or equations uh, which are present in SPSS software. So if you would like, for example, to recompute some result, you can go into algorithm and you can try to say, okay, SPSS works well or not, I'm better than SPSS is. So it's possible to use algorithms. And maybe one information which should be also correct to add uh, is uh, that uh, software which is called PSPP exists. Uh, it's free version which is very similar to SPSS, not only uh, uh, capable of all procedures included in SPSS. So if you are a fan of uh, free software, so use PSPP instead of SPSS. That's possible. So, and now we will go back to the SPSS environment and we will learn something about data matrix. So, if I say data matrix, so matrix in general in maths means some tables which has rows and columns. So matrix, it's table, we can say, with row and columns. And if we say data matrix, it means it is table with our own data with our own figures. So this is still blank, but data matrix. One problematic, maybe, uh, part of SPSS is that it has two screens for this data matrix. One which is called data view, and one which is called variable view. So be careful whether you are in data view, and whether you are in variable view. We will see it uh, in a few minutes how to use uh, the second uh, part of the screen variable view. But if we are here at the beginning, so we have some rows, you can see some numbering, one, two, three, four, five, and you can see some general description of individual columns, which is var or V-A-R. So it stands, it's easy to guess, for variable. So, it's very easy to say individual columns are cre created by variables and individual rows are created by something what we call usually generally in statistics as cases. Mostly in social science research, cases will be individual respondents or individual people. But sometimes it can be slightly changed what can be unit of our analysis instead of respondents, instead of individual people. 
in social science research, what we can use instead of it. Sometimes we are not focused on people or individuals. Hmm? What can we use instead of it? Hmm? What can be our unit of analysis? For example, if we are asking about living conditions of families, so our unit and row in the data matrix will not be individual, but family. We can, for example, do research about uh, classroom climate. So our individual row will be individual classroom, et cetera, et cetera. But mostly, of course, we are discussing about individuals. But once again, general expression is cases, and cases mostly are created by individual people, respondents, but sometimes it can be different. If we would, for example, change our discipline, for example, you are not uh, very satisfied that you do social science and you would like uh, to change into science, it means physics, chemistry, etc. So your individual role can be an experiment. Or maybe if you would like to change into biology, so individual plant or individual animal can be individual case. So these are cases, mostly respondents. And now, individual columns are created by variables. We know from previous lecture, and I would like to thank you for all your homework with nice examples, uh, uh, what are variables. But now, I would like to warn you before the simple equation that usually individual question means individual variable. Why is it so that variable sometimes it's not equated to question. Let's imagine about some example that one question is not implemented into one variable. Yeah? Okay, for example, the question can be, uh, please uh, let me know five, of your best friends, yeah? Okay, yeah, it can be question which result is five variables at all, if I limit the number of responses, yeah? Okay, yeah, that's nice example. Some other examples. This is uh, the example of open-ended question. So you do not predefine possible answers. But sometimes also for close-ended questions, you can have more than one answer only. For example, you will use some list of priorities for individual government, and you will ask people, please select three the most important goals according to your opinion. So you will have the first, second one, and the third variable for this one question with three options. Yeah. So only, please re remember, mostly one question means one variable, but sometimes one question can be implemented into more than one variable. And if you like to use variables, and SPSS will force you you will have to assign something what is called variable name. So uh, it's name of current column. So instead of this general VAR, there will be, for example, some description, usually something like technical A1, Q1, etc., etc. So all these columns in a real data file, and we will create some real data file in a few minutes, will have some variable names. Usually these are only technical names, so very short one. Uh, they do not include some special parts of, uh, for example, Czech or German alphabet. They use only English letters. Uh, but still, we have to assign some names into these columns. So that's variable name. And if we change in data matrix into the second part, 
which is called variable view. So once again, if you go into SPSS environment and on the left side down, you will click on variable view. So this <coughs> screen is slightly different from previous one. Individual rows here are created by individual variables. So original columns in data view, here in variable view, you can read as variables as individual rows. And individual columns are properties of these variables. So we will learn something about type, this, decimals, label, values, missing, columns, etc., etc. in a few minutes. So here in data view, you have usually figures and only names of variables. In variable view, you can define or read variable properties. And here is the list of all properties and we will learn how to use it in a few minutes. So there is some technical name, type, this, decimal, variable label, values, it means wording of uh, individual answers, uh, definition of missing values and measurement scale, we know from previous uh, lecture, nominal, ordinal or cardinal in SPSS environment, it's called scale only. So, let's start with uh, these properties and uh, we will use uh, a very simple example, so we will use our own data. So it will be, for most of us, the first time we will enter some data into SPSS environment. So. First of all, I would like to discuss what we will try to prepare as our data. So I would propose for very simple uh, example to have only three variables, one nominal, one ordinal, and one cardinal. Uh, and uh, now only we should decide what we can measure in this classroom. So my proposal would be very easy nominal variable can be gender, whether we are male or female. So that's easy. And some proposal for ordinal and some proposal for cardinal variable. Let's try. One cardinal and one ordinal variable which we can measure here in the classroom which you are able to answer and enter into data matrix, which is not some secret. <laughs> Age we can measure but it's not very polite to ask ladies about the age, but let's try. <laughs> we will see results. Okay, and some ordinal variable. Do you have some idea about some question we can ask and nobody would be ashamed of it? Hmm? Yeah. Countries are not ordinal, they are nominal. So, some opinion. For example, about today's weather, whether you like it or dislike it, uh, until you scale from one, which is excellent, to five, which is I'm totally disappointed, or something like this. Yeah? You know that in society, if you do not know uh, what to discuss, the weather is the best way how to <laughs> be successful. So let's try. <laughs> okay, so first of all, Let's choose variable view and we will define three new variables. And as usually in social science research, we use technical names such as Q1, Q2, Q3 for the first question, second question, third question. So I will propose the same here. So please write Q1 as the first technical name. So for example, it will be gender. Q1. Uh, Q2 will be our opinion about today's weather. And Q3 will be our age, as colleague proposed. Yeah? Okay, so if we have Q1, Q2, Q3 uh, as technical names, and it's quite uh, boring to remember Q1 is blah, 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 Q2 is blah, blah, blah. So I would propose to add variable label. So if you will go into the column which is called label, you can describe in detail the meaning of Q1, Q2, Q3. 
And in all tables and all charts, we will be producing these labels will be present instead of Q1, Q2, Q3, which is quite pleasant. So I would propose uh, that label for Q1 will be only gender. You can start with the capital as well as uh, small letter, it's up to you. And here in labels, in comparison with technical names, you can use your special alphabet uh, you like. So you can use uh, symbols from general language, you can use uh, symbols from Czech language, Slovak language, etc., etc. Only keyboards have to support it. Here, you have to start with uh, letter at the beginning. Usually, you shouldn't exceed eight uh, positions and uh, only letters and uh, numbers and also some special uh, symbols such as underline can be used. But no space is allowed in the name itself. It's technical name. So, in gender uh, here you can use everything. So if you would like to use some Czech expression, for example, dívka nebo chlapec, you can use it as well here in label. So, gender. Here, uh, we should uh, define our opinion about weather. And the last one, age, we discussed. Okay, so, as you can see, if we switch one again into data view, so we have defined three new variables, Q1, Q2, Q3, and now the question is, okay, but we also added information. This is gender, opinion about weather, and age, and it is missing here. If you like to see it, there is quite a magic icon. Here are the three core stripes with the column. It is called variables, and if you click on it, you can see all the properties. So Q1 is called gender, Q2 opinion about weather, and uh, Q3 is age. So all properties defined in variable view, you can see by this icon also in data view sheet. So it's quite nice. Okay, so once again, let's go back into variable view, and we will define some more properties for our variables. So the first property is called type. It is something what I would call technical type. It means whether we use numbers, then the type is numeric. So if we will use, for example, code one and two for male and female, it's numeric. If we would like, instead of it, to write male and female, but it's time consuming, I would warn you, you can change the type. So if you click into numeric two times, so you can see but a lot of types can be offered by SPSS environment. Numeric is default, but if you would like to write male or female, you have to change another format. Which one would fit to this task? Yeah? String, yeah. Text is called string in computation science. If you, for example, would like to define date, so you can choose date and many other formats for dates. If you would like to follow your own currency and you are from the US, you would like to use dollar. And you can use formatting of your currency. There is also custom currency, so you can add check rounds, euros, etc., etc. And there are some special formats we will not use. We <coughs> will use in this lecture only numeric type of data, as it is the most widespread format. So, it's numeric. Uh, next two columns, you define how many figures or letters are assigned to your variable. So here, if you have eight, it means that your gender can be described by maximum eight figures. But it doesn't make any sense if you will use code only one and two. And you also define here that you will use two decimals. So somebody will be male or female 1.2 or 
or 145, etc., etc. Of course, I am not discussing about gender issues currently, and maybe if you are enrolled in this topic, you know it is not only black and white and male and female. I remember that also Kinsey in the 50s discussed about some scale of our sexuality, etc. That's not current problem of our statistical data analysis. But for gender as classical research uh, do, we will follow the logic only one and two codes. So that's why no decimals. So first of all, if you will go into decimals and go down to zero or type zero directly, and then change this to one only. I would say this is quite old-fashioned style of uh, changing properties as uh, there were big problems uh, with data storage uh, space uh, uh, at older computers. Currently, if you will not change this definition, it doesn't matter at all. Yeah? Excuse me? Yeah, as if we will code gender, we will use only code one or two. So we need only one figure and we do not need any decimals. So zero decimals and only one waves, only one position is necessary to include one or two, male or female. In one step. Yeah. Okay, so very easy hint. Uh, thanks for this uh, very nice question. For example, if I would like uh, to take this one to these two positions, or maybe 100 positions, so very easy is. If you are uh, in the first cell, you take Control plus C, copy, then you use your mouse uh, uh, to take uh, two positions and Control plus V. Oh, no, it's currently copying something else. Uh, once again, control plus C and control plus V. Oh, it's not working here, excuse me. But uh, for most properties it works, so I don't know. I will try at home and let you know about the tip. But still, let's go to opinion about weather currently. Uh, so once again, we would like to use scale from one very nice, excellent weather, up to five. I'm totally disappointed, for example, about today's weather. So if we would like to define uh, decimals, not necessary, so zero, and this also one would be enough. But Q3, H, that's different case. Of course, now we can say mm, we would be as much precise as we can be so, for example, that somebody would tell us, okay, my age currently is 24.35. But I would propose uh, don't be so precise here. So, we will use some rounding or your completed age as classical example. So, I would propose to omit decimals once again and to use only two figures, as I guess nobody above 100 here is present here. So that's the definition of our properties. Okay, so uh, here it is. So we have defined technical name, type, this, decimals, label, and now let's go further into label, uh, into values, excuse me. What does it mean values? It means that you can assign some labels to individual values of your variable. If you go back to previous lecture, you can help me and tell for which type of variables it makes sense and for which type of variables it doesn't make sense to define values. Hmm? For which variables we have to use some coding and for which variables it's not necessary to use any coding. For gender, to use coding. for gender, as we can use one for male or one for female, and we would like to know what is one. Okay? Opinion about whether, once again, it's our internal scale, and we have to decide what will be one, two, three, four, five. 
So once again, it's necessary to code. So generally, for nominal and ordinal variables, we have to assign some labels. And for cardinal or scale in a SPSS environment, that's not necessary, as it has meaning only in the figure included. OK, so let's go into values. And once again, click on these three dots. And uh, assignment is very easy. Now, only there will be huge discussion whether one will be male or female. But uh, I would avoid this discussion. And I would say that one will be female. So we will be maybe more than politically correct. But uh, I would say that in most uh, current uh, studies from educational research, usually one is uh, called for girl. So we are following this standard. So female, uh, once again, yeah, one for female. Then you click on add, and the second assignment is two for male. Once again, add and OK. And now, all output with male and female uh, gender variable will be included instead of one and two codes, male and female description. OK? Next step will be definition uh, of opinion about weather. So I would propose uh, that one code will be like. And uh, five, the opposite will be dislike. If you have some scale, it is enough to define only endpoints. You do not have to define all options. If you at least would like to save your time. OK. And the last one variable, not necessary to assign at all. So we can skip it. Last one, property of variables, and we will learn more next lecture, of course, about other details, is measure. For most SPSS procedures, it's not defined, it's not necessary to define measure, but uh, some procedures uh, uh, would like uh, this definition, so let's try to define. Here we have three types, scale, ordinal, and nominal. So in our uh, expression, it's nominal, ordinal, and cardinal. So if we start with gender, it's nominal. If we will go further, so opinion about whether it's ordinal, and the last one is scale. And that's enough. So we have defined three variables and all necessary properties for this first insight. OK. And now let's go back into data view. And it's time for something what we call data entry. So we will try to ask ourselves, and we will enter our data. So I will ask all of you to answer these three questions. Of course, it's not necessary uh, to give our answer about gender. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, we will have data matrix. So I will start with uh, the first colleague. So uh, one for gender. Now opinion about current weather. Three. Three, OK. And if I can ask you about your age. 32. 32. 32. OK. So your colleague is female, of course. Two. Two, OK. 26. 26. OK. So colleague is male. Uh, two and 27. 27, OK. Next colleague is once again female, yeah. Two. 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 Okay. <clears throat> Twenty-nine. Right. Okay. So let's go. So once again, male. Opinion about the other two. Um, Take into account that uh, we should have variable, not constant. Yeah. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay. Next colleague is once again female. Yeah. One and twenty. Yeah. Okay. Um, two and twenty-one. Twenty-one. Thanks a lot. Next colleague, once again female. Um, four. Okay. And uh, 
screen. Okay. Next colleague, uh, so let's uh, Three and thirty. Okay. Okay. So Katarzyna. Uh, five and twenty-four. Thanks a lot. Next colleague. Two and twenty. Two and twenty. Okay. Next colleague, what's again now? Four and twenty-four. Four and twenty-four. Uh, two and twenty-three. Two and twenty-three. Okay. And two and twenty-two. Two and twenty-two. And now letter. So it's once again mail. Given uh, about letter, that's nice. One and my age is thirty-nine. <coughs> so it's nice opportunity to know <laughs> how old lecture is. Uh, so. Now we have data matrix, and uh, if we have data matrix, uh, it's a quite wise strategy to save it. So I would propose to save data file currently. So file, save as. And here you have to find destination. So I think you have uh, some uh, free space at uh, uh, disk which is called H. Uh, and uh, if you have your USB stick, please uh, save it at your USB stick. And please save it as we will use it next time also for some data analysis. So I will use uh, my uh, USB and uh, you have to assign uh, name as by default it is called untitled one. So I would propose for example data or something like this. And uh, the next option you can see that by default it will be SAV format, classical SPSS, but then there are more and more uh, individual data formats, uh, for example, Excel formats, uh, database formats, etc., etc. But please use by default SAV extension, classical SPSS uh, formatting, and save it. And you can see that the second window, which is called Output is opened now and says, okay, I have saved your data and uh, a directory and the name of the data itself. So, that's easy. So, this is our first data file we have for data analysis. And the next step, yeah, are there some questions? If there are some problems, let me know and I will try to fix it. And now we will move uh, to practical example of descriptive statistics in SPSS. So, you know from previous lecture that if we would like to analyze data, uh, we try to describe them at the first step and for this description, we use some measure of central tendency, measure of variance, or some kurtosis or skewness. And uh, we discussed last time, yeah, some technical problem. I will fix it. Uh, I'll uh, finish uh, my idea. And uh, for the first insight into data, we usually use central tendency measures, and from previous lecture, we know uh, that we usually compute mean, mode, or median. And that's uh, what we will show. Now, please uh, stop saving if it is possible and follow uh, these procedures. So, the first procedure, very easy one, is called very easily descriptive statistics. So, I use here italics for all menus you have to go through. So if you will go into SPSS, you will go into Analyze. The second option is called Descriptive Statistics. And once again, the second option is called Descriptives. And here's the first dialog in SPSS environment uh, you can see. And the logic of handling is following. At the left side, usually, there is a list of all variables which are available for current procedure. So here you have all our three procedures, as for all three procedures we can compute descriptives. On the right side, there is here only one window, 
we will see more advanced dialogues with more windows on the right side. And if you would like to define your computation, you have to choose one or more variables and move them to the right side. So, for the first insight, I would uh, propose uh, to enter options here. And you can see that by default, in this procedure, we will compute mean, standard deviation, we will learn more about it next time, minimum and maximum value. Then there are some more options, but still, if you can see that it computes mainly mean, so you can recognize that this procedure is mainly designed for cardinal variables. So, if we would decide to use it, and I would propose to use it for this first time, we have to choose only one cardinal variable in our data set we have, and it's age. So please select age and move it to the right side. And if you move at least one variable to the right side, you can see that OK is active currently. So you can click on it, and we have the first output, first table from our data. And what we can read in this table? So we can read that here we have 15 people present. It is called N number of respondents. Minimum and maximum. So the youngest here is, I guess it was lady, with uh, 20 years old. And the oldest is lecture. That's quite obvious. You, we can see also some average or mean age for all of us and standard deviation we will discuss later. So that's the first procedure, descriptive statistics. Maybe better for social science purposes uh, for computation is procedure frequencies. So once again, we will go into analyze descriptive statistics, but instead of descriptives, we will go into frequencies. So let's go this way. So once again, analyze, descriptive statistics, and the first option called frequencies. Maybe it seems illogical for the first side, but please change displaying frequency tables, and we will do not like to display frequency table for this first insight. But we would like to see something more. If you will follow the option called statistics, you can ask for mean, median, or mode. So I would propose uh, uh, currently to ask only for uh, median and mode. Click on continue. And if you would like to compute median and mode, my question is, which variable from these three variables is the best for computation of uh, mode and median? Mode and median. For which variable it makes sense from statistical and substantive point of view to compute mode and median? Yeah, opinion about whether would be the best option. For ordinal variables to compute median and mode, it makes sense the best. Okay, so let's take opinion about whether, move to the right side and click on OK. And here it is. So we can see that mode, it means most of you, or us, decided to say that current weather, if we have scale from one, the best one, and the worst one, five, so uh, most of us said, OK, it's not so bad, two. And also median, so if we would rank all our answers from the one till the five, and would get somebody who is in the middle, it's eight person here in the class, it would be two. So two is the best representative of something in the middle of our opinions. Okay, so it's uh, median and mode. And for the last one variable, it means gender, it makes sense from statistical point of view, compute only mode. So let's go once again to the same procedure. So analyze descriptive statistics and frequencies, and here I would like only uh, to say, 
if you perform some procedure in a SPSS environment, for example, last time we computed uh, mode and median for opinion about weather, so you can see it is prepared for you to compute the same procedure once again with the same variable. So if you like uh, to repeat the same procedure, it's very easy. And we would like to change it, so we would like uh, to exchange opinion about better by gender. And we would like also to change properties and to compute mode only and not median. So into statistics and check only mode. And we can compute it very easily. And we can see here that mode is code one, and we know that one is code for female. So there are more female than male uh, present in this classroom. Okay, so, and we are nearly at the end of our time, so I would only show you some hints in this uh, SPSS output window, and I will show you how to export uh, this output into Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel environment, and then, of course, uh, I have to assign you next homework. Okay, so, first of all, if you can see these outputs, there is also some special tree with individual parts of the output. You can see that individual tables usually use the same icon, here, here, and here. And if you, for example, would like to see all these tables together at one place. So it's very easy. You go to the left panel, you will take the left button of your mouse and move it up to the place you would like to move it. And here you have two tables together and if you like to move also the third one, you will move it. And now currently all three tables are at the same place. If you would like to change the ordering of tables, you can do it, etc., etc. There is also possibility, but I will not discuss about it uh, in detail, uh, to change, for example, formatting. If you, for example, do not like uh, uh, this font, uh, you would like to have uh, a table in red color, etc., etc., you double click on table and uh, you can change nearly everything in the table. So you can change uh, uh, bold by italics, uh, uh, by underlined letters, uh, another uh, type of letters, etc., etc. So it's up to you to do changes. But please use it wisely. Statistics is not about fashion and design, but about substantive results. Okay, and now uh, technical hint. Uh, so how to take these results all together and export into Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel environment to save it uh, for uh, another purposes. So, if you use option uh, file and export, so you can see that here as document type you can select which data format you would like to see. So there are some possibilities, it's Microsoft Excel, Excel 97 till 2004, it means old format XLS, or newer with XLS X extension. Then there are some HTML formatting, for example, you did quite nice analysis and you would like to publish it uh, on the website, so it's possible uh, to prepare HTML format. But uh, I would say that maybe the most practical would be Microsoft Word formatting for you. So. You will choose Microsoft Word, and then there will be some problems, excuse me here, uh, but for the next time, please take your USB sticks and it will be quite easy. Uh, uh, you have to choose uh, the drive on which you would like to save it, so I will use my USB stick. Then assign name, for example, output, second lecture or something like this. And if you save it, by clicking OK, you will have it on your USB stick or elsewhere. So if we go back, I will try to find it on my USB stick. It was called output, yeah, here it is. So, and you can see uh, output 
in Microsoft Word, and all these tables can be edited in Microsoft Word environment. So it's very easy. Okay. Uh, all the uh, parts of the presentation we will do next time, but uh, now it's time uh, to assign you second homework. So please try to prepare your own data with at least three variables of different types once again. So one nominal, one ordinal, and one cardinal. And uh, try to compute mean, median, and mode when it is possible and statistically correct and interpret results. And I would add uh, one more uh, requirement, excuse me, it's not included uh, in the slide. Uh, please uh, prepare your data with at least 20 respondents, 20 rows. So at least 20 cases should be included in data file. Okay, that's all for today. Uh, please feel free to ask me if there are some questions. Okay, if not, yeah. 20 cases at least you should have in your own data. You should uh, try to imagine your own data with at least 20 cases. Yeah. Yeah, clear. Okay. Okay, so enjoy the day. According to your opinion, it's quite nice weather. Uh, of course, I do understand it was only for statistical purposes for this course. Uh, and uh, next time, uh, we will finish our discussion about SPSS environment and we will learn uh, more about computation SPSS. Okay, bye.